The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yes. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is parquet. Parquet margarine, P-A-R-K-A-Y, it's wonderful. The great Gildersleeve is trudging manfully home from the office. Our water commissioner is a bit tired, perhaps, but his pudgy face reflects the contentment of a day's work well done. <laughs> a little thrill of pride surges through him as he reaches the border of his domain. He is the king, and yonder lies his castle. His majesty stops and surveys his kingdom. Mustn't forget to put the cans out tonight. Oh, Leroy skates again. I've got to talk to him about this. Anybody home? Oh, hello, Bertie. Evening, Mr. Gilsleeve. Have a good day. Yes, thank you, Bertie. Oh, Miss Gilsleeve. Yes. Don't forget, tonight's can night. Yes, I know. Any mail? Yes, I put some down the mail. Thank you, Bertie. You won't forget about tonight. What? It's can night. Yeah, all right, Bertie. <laughs> hmm. Looks like they're all bills. What's this? What's what, Miss Gilsey? This letter isn't for us. It's for Mr. E.L. Hoffman. Know anybody by that name? No, sir. That's funny. Right address, but wrong name. It's from some uh, summer resort. Lake Contentment. Probably a circular. Well, anyway, it doesn't belong to us. Want me to stick it back in the mailbox? No, I'll take care of it, Bertie. I'll give it to the mailman in the morning. Uh, forgot to give that letter to the mailman this morning. Well, I'll take care of it tomorrow. Must do that. That letter's still here. I must give that back tomorrow without fail. Bertie! Remind me to give this letter back tomorrow, will you? It's been here for over a week. Let's be on our toes, Bertie. Tomorrow comes. The great man is lingering over his last morning cup of coffee. Miss Gilsleeve, the mailman's here. Huh? I told him you had a letter for him. What letter? You said that I should remind you. Oh, that letter. Uh, you can give it to him, Bertie. It's on the mantel. Yes, sir. I don't see it, Miss Gilsey. What? It's not on the mantle. It was there last night, Bertie. It doesn't have legs. I don't think it got up and walked away. Well, it's not there, and the mailman's waiting. Oh, suppose I'll have to find it. Did you look all over the mantle? Yes, sir. Under things? Yes, sir. Now, let's take another look. What's Leroy's catcher's mitt doing up here? Not under there. Maybe it's mixed up in these movie magazines. I looked under Clark Gable. It's not there. <laughs> Never saw so much junk. That candy cane has been there since last Christmas. And what's this? Oh, my insurance policy. Bertie, we've got to keep this mantle cleared off. I tried, but it's a losing battle. Uh-oh, that's the mailman. What shall I tell him? Tell him to hold his horses. What's the matter with him? It's that new mailman. Looks real like a crab to me. Oh, well, you tell him we'll give him the letter tomorrow. It's here someplace. Well, he ain't gonna like it. <laughs> What's he worrying about? No skin off his nose. You'll get his letter. I could have sworn it was on this mantle. Uh, I'll take one more look. Might be under the clock. Nope. Uh, here's my garage key. Wonder where that was. Miss Gilsey? Well? He says he wants that letter now. What? 
Yes, sir. He says you're holding up the U.S. mail. Who does he think he is? That's what he said. Well, he's not going to bully me. After all, he's a public servant. I'm a taxpayer. Why, I pay his salary. Part of it, anyway. He wouldn't have a job if it weren't for me. He'd better be careful what he says. Yes, sir. He'd better watch his step. It's time somebody told him a thing or two. Put him in his place. I'm not working for him. He's working for me. He better remember that. Why don't you tell him, Mr. Gilsey? I will. Well? Uh, uh, good morning. <laughs> Did you find that letter? Well, no, I'm sorry about that. I, I thought it was on the mantel. Oh. It was there yesterday. I can't imagine what happened to it. Awfully sorry. Hope I haven't inconvenienced you. Well, that's all right. I'll drop by again. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. Thanks. Not at all. Goodbye, Mr. Gillespie. Goodbye. Nice fellow, Bertie. <laughs> What's the matter, Bertie? You sure told him. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Bessie. Bessie, I said good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Any calls this morning? Bessie! Oh, what'd you say? Bessie, take a letter. What? Dear Bessie, if you wish to remain in the employ of the Summerfield Department of Water, I suggest you do your daydreaming at home on your own time. Yours truly, Commissioner Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. How many copies? Oh, 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 you're joking. That's what you think. Now, stop staring out of the window and let's get some work done around here. Yes, sir. You'd better finish that report for the mayor. Where's my fountain pen? Eh, guess it's in my pocket. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Gildersleeve? What? Uh, oh, nothing, Bessie. I just found a letter. It came to my house by mistake. <laughs> Bessie, you better take this right down to the post office. But what about the report? The report can wait. This is important, Bessie. Can't hold up the United States mail. Go on, Bessie. Get on your motorcycle. Motorcycle? Figure of speech, Bessie. <laughs> Here you are. Now get going. This letter looks familiar. Mr. E. L. Hoffman. You know him? I sent him a water bill last week. Why, this is it. What? I don't know how I got your address on it. Guess I made a mistake. You guess? I wondered why we hadn't heard from him. Ye gods, where did you get these envelopes? They're from some summer resort. I had a few left over. What? Well, <laughs> that's where I spent my vacation. Vacation, Lake Contentment. It was a wonderful place. Bessie, for your information, this is the city water department, not a lake. Well, last week when we ran out of envelopes, you said we couldn't afford to buy any. I should use whatever I had. That's what you told me. All right, Bessie, but you didn't have to use these. Look what it says. Forget your worries, just be gay. It's time to take a holiday. <laughs> now, how do you expect people to pay their water bills when we send them stuff like that? No wonder no collections came in this month. I try to do my best. Bessie, this is the last straw, the straw that broke the camel's back. I've tried to be patient, but this time you've made one mistake too many. You've been here a long time, Bessie, but I've got to think of the department. It's bigger than both of us. It's much... <laughs> Bessie! <laughs> Bessie, I, I didn't mean it. Yes, I lost my head. We all make mistakes. <laughs> what if they don't pay their water bills? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Bessie, blow your nose. Oh, Martin, why did you leave me? Martin? Who's Martin? I met him at Lake Contentment. He won the athletic tournament. He chinned himself 25 times. <laughs> Yeah, one of those summer camp show-offs. Oh, no. Martin's a wonderful boy, but he's so moody. Oh, why did we have that silly quarrel? Well, I wouldn't worry, Bessie. Martin will come back. <laughs> no, he won't. You don't know what I've been through this week, Mr. Gildersleeve. Every night I lay awake and cry. That's why I've been dozing in the office. Yeah. <laughs> I just know I'm going to lose him. Plain little me. Why, that's nonsense, Bessie. You're as attractive as any girl. Well, a lot of girls. <laughs> All you need is to spruce up a little bit. Look at that dress you're wearing. Get a new one, something flashy. That's what men like. Come on, Bessie. I'll go with you and help you pick one out. It's for the good of the water department. Mr. Gildersleeve, do you, do you think he might like one of those new long skirts? Long skirts? Tss, don't cover them up, Bessie. 
Romance is like business. It pays to advertise. <laughs> Uh, that was an excellent dinner, Bertie. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Gilsleeve. Give my compliments to the chef. <laughs> I'll do that. You're a card, Unc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, you're in a good humor tonight, Uncle Mort. Well, I guess I am. Little personnel problem came up at the office today, children. And if I do say so myself, I handled it rather neatly. Oh. Matter of fact, it's rather an interesting story. When I got to the office this morning, Leroy, huh? we don't leave the table without asking to be excused. Okay. Can I be excused? No. You're going to sit here and listen to this. You can learn something. Okay. Well, when I got down to the office, I found Bessie. Who do you expect to find? Leroy. <laughs> I'm in a good humor, young man, but don't push me too far. Don't mind him, Unky. I'm listening. Thank you, my dear. Well, to make a long story short, when I got to the office this morning, I got there bright and early. The morning hours are the best for working, you know. <sighs> Leroy, we put our hand over our mouth when we yawn. Where are your manners? Oh, keep going, Unc. I'm listening. <laughs> well, when I got to the office, I found Bessie. The poor girl had been fluttering around all week like a nervous canary. Then I found out what the trouble was. What do you think? She'd been having trouble with her boyfriend. Lester? No, no, a new one. Some fellow named uh, Martin. Well, I knew if I wanted to get the office running smoothly again, I'd have to do something. That's where the psychology came in. <laughs> so, I got an idea. Phone, I'll get it on. No, I will. I'm expecting a call from Francie. You'll sit there, both of you. Bertie will get it. Bertie! I'll get it! We don't all leap to our feet every time the phone rings. This isn't the firehouse. It's you, Mr. Gilsey. Telephone. All right. See you later, Uncle. You'll remain right here, both of you. For once, we're going to have some after-dinner conversation in this house, like civilized people. Coming! Hello? Mr. Gildersleeve, this is Bessie. Oh, well, how are you, Bessie? Mr. Gildersleeve, I just saw Martin. Martin? Well, that's wonderful. So you two got together, eh? Well, how'd Martin like the new dress? Oh! <laughs> Bessie, what's the matter? Martin's mad at me again. He's mad at you, too. What? He says you've changed me. I'm not the old Bessie anymore. Was... All right. Not the new Bessie. Ye gods. He says I'll never be the old Bessie again. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm so upset. And? Oh, do you mind if I don't come to work tomorrow? Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Bessie. Gee, someday I'll fire that girl. <laughs> More about the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. As the parquet reporter, it's my job to keep posted on how the Summerfield folks feel about parquet, the margarine of craft quality. So, the other day, I said, Marjorie, what do you think of parquet? Oh, I think it's wonderful. I'm on the way to the store to get some now. Oh, good for you. I suppose you're going right up to the counter and say, give me a pound of parquet, the margarine of craft quality, made from carefully selected products of American farms. I'll say nothing of the kind. Well, maybe you're going to ask for parquet, the margarine with a finer, fresher flavor. The margarine that's so good on rolls, pancakes, muffins, or waffles. I'd feel silly saying all that. All I want is a pound of parquet. Well, why not ask for that rich, smooth, wholesome margarine, each pound of which contains 15,000 units of valuable vitamin A? Look, Mr. Wald, I'm going to buy parquet, not sell it. Well, why not say I'd like a pound of delicious, flavor-fresh parquet, a favorite spread for America's bread? <laughs> How you announcers do go on. I'm just going to say one pound of parquet, please. Well, I guess that'll do the trick. After all... Every day, millions of women all over America say, Parquet, please, because it tastes so good. That's Parquet margarine made by Kraft. P-A-R-K-A-Y, it's wonderful. Well, this has been another bad day for the great Gildersleeve. Bessie was too upset to come to the office, so all work is at a standstill. It's evening now, and to forget his troubles, the great man is climbing the stairs to the Jolly Boys Clubhouse over Floyd Munson's barber shop. 
Well, if it ain't the commission. Oh, hello, Floyd. Hi, yeah. Commissioner. Hello, Chief. How's the watchdog of the law tonight? Oh, can't complain. Well, who's that under the moose head? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy. <laughs> yeah, speaking of moose heads, where's the old goat? Oh, the judge couldn't come tonight. Had a little heavy law work. Well, Commissioner, we've missed your off-key baritone. Yeah, uh, you should talk, Chief, for that foghorn bass of yours. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Uh, <clears throat> where have you been keeping yourself? Well, I've been pretty busy. Had a lot of things to do. Why, sure, Chief, haven't you heard? The Commissioner's got a new sideline these days. What's that? Picking out dresses for young ladies. What? Well, what do you know? What are you talking about, Floyd? Oh, uh, don't play possum, Commish. You're a slick article, all right. Who'd have thought that you and Bessie would be schmoozing around? Oh! <laughs> now look here, you fellows. Come clean, Commissioner. When did this love match start? Confounded, where did you ever get such a silly idea like that? Well, I don't like to spread any gossip. Not much, you don't. But the missus was down doing a little shopping at Hogan Brothers yesterday. Well, you could have knocked her over with a feather when she saw you in the ladies' ready-to-wear department. I can explain that. That should be very interesting, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> Who asked you for your opinion? Well, if you want to buy a dress for some young lady, that's your own affair. I didn't pay for the dress. Just like in the movies. The boss and the secretary get a pass for each other. Ye gods, chief. Does she ever take dictation sitting on your lap? Floyd! <laughs> I've had about enough of you in your pool room mind. Don't be so touchy, Commish. We're proud of you. What? Yeah. Understand you took her away from a younger man. Makes us older fellas feel pretty good. How'd you do it, Commish? Vitamins? Oh! <laughs> I've had enough of this. The whole thing is ridiculous. Just because I did a little innocent thing, tried to help somebody, this is what I get. I give you my word, fellas. All I was trying to do was dress Bessie up a little. Help her win her boyfriend back. Sure. That's the truth. Hey, hey, Commissioner, Commissioner, where are you going? I'm going home. Jolly boys. <laughs> Come on, we didn't mean anything, Commissioner. No, Mr. Gildersleeve, I assure you, there was no offense intended. You keep your two cents out of this, Peavy. Ah, oh, come on, Commish, cool off, have a Coke. How about a song? I don't feel like singing. Don't be like that, Commissioner. We're all pals. Let's gather around the old piano and give out with a little harmony. What do you say? Well... Come on, Mr. Gildersleeve. Let's put our arms around each other's shoulders just like two jolly boys. You old hypocrite. <laughs> Floyd, how about massaging the ivory? Okay, Chief. Well, what'll it be, man? Hey, how about this one? <laughs> Floyd! Here's a rollicking number. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, true. <laughs> Hey, we haven't done this one lately. Hey, that's it, take good. And don't sing in my ear, Peavy. Face the piano. When you are a tulip, a sweet yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose, when you caress me, was then heaven bless me, what a blessing, and no one knows. When you call me dearie, push down where the bluegrass grows. Right on the nose. <laughs> Your lips were sweeter than tulip when you wore a tulip. Judge. Hooker! Look what the wind blew in. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Thought you were pounding the law books tonight. Gentlemen, I'm afraid I am the harbinger of bad news. What's up, Judge? My purpose in coming here is to warn one of our members of possible danger. Sort of a message to Garcia. Speak English, Horace. Well, it concerns you, Gildy. What? I'm afraid you're in for some trouble. What are you talking about? Well, I'll make it brief. A while ago, I decided to take a little constitutional. And I happened to pass your house, Gildy. And, uh... <clears throat> throat's a little dry. I wonder if I might have a Coke. Later, Judge. Come to the point. 
Well, as I was saying, Gildy, I happened to pass your house. Yes, yes. Well, I observed an extremely large young man pacing up and down. He appeared to be in a violent state. Having heard about your recent peccadillas with your secretary, Gildy, oh, I recognized the young man as your rival. What happened? Well, I realized a friend's life was in danger. I knew this young giant would have to be removed from the premises, by force if necessary. This was the time for action. I studied him carefully, looking for an opening. Then what'd you do? I decided to run right down here and tell you, Gildy. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Judge. Not at all. Did he have a gun? Well, I didn't notice. Wouldn't surprise me, though. Yes, they usually do. Gee, I can just see the headlines. Love-crazed youth shoots rival in the stomach. Oh! <laughs> That's not funny. Well, I've done my duty. I think I've run along. Me too. Yep, might as well bust it up, I guess. Uh, wait a minute, fellas. What's the rush? Evening's young yet. <laughs> Sorry, Commissioner. Got a heavy day at the shop tomorrow. How about a little poker, fellas? Come on. You know I always lose. Not tonight. Well, good night. Oh, wait a minute, Judge. What? I'll walk with you. You go past my house. It's on your way. Sorry, I'm going the other way tonight, Gilday. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. Well, don't look at me, Commissioner. I don't live out your way. <laughs> Fine friends. What's the matter? Scared to go home? I didn't say that. Why don't you get the chief to escort you? He's a cop. He gets paid for it. Not so fast, Floyd. I'm off duty. Besides, I don't have my badge. Oops. A fine excuse. Head of the police force. Won't even protect the life of an innocent citizen. All you care about is handing out traffic tickets. You let a dangerous criminal run around the streets waving a gun right under your nose. Hold on, Commissioner. This fellow hasn't done anything. My job is to catch criminals after they commit a crime. You just let him shoot you. <laughs> then... <laughs> then watch me go into action. <laughs> I'll have him behind bars before dawn, fingerprinted and everything. A lot of good that'll do me, stretched out cold on the front lawn. Sorry, that's the law. Come on, Floyd. See you in the morning, Commish. I hope. Uh, uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, if I can be of any service. What? Oh, well, come on, Peavy. You're better than nothing. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Beebe, wait a minute. Uh, what are you going in there for? Yeah, I live here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dark. I didn't see the house. Well, good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Peavy, want to stay out and talk a while? Uh, not particularly. Well... Say, it's kind of chilly. <sighs> a cup of coffee would be nice. Mrs. Peavy makes wonderful coffee. Yes, she does. I think I'll go in and have a cup. <laughs> Well, I'm in no hurry. I could come in and have a cup with you. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but Mrs. Peavy doesn't like to have anyone see her with her hair up in curlers. I try to avoid it myself. <laughs> well? If I were you, I, I'd just go home and get a good night's sleep. Sleep? But Peavy... Good uh, night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy! Pe Gone. <laughs> I'm all alone. Well, I guess I better go home. Can't stay here all night. Or can I? No. Pull yourself together, Gildersleeve. What are you afraid of? Face it like a man. <laughs> What's that? Oh, the cat. Yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. Yeah, nice kitty. Am I glad to see you. Going my way? <laughs> If he's still in front of my house. I guess he is. Probably hiding behind some bush, waiting to pounce on me like a hungry panther. What's that? Something behind that telephone pole. I saw it move. Wonder if that's him. If I could just peek around, <coughs> it moved again. <laughs> Looks awfully big. Oh. It's my shadow. <laughs> Good 
How do I get into these silly things? All I did was try to make Bessie happy. I could just explain that to this young madman before he pulls the trigger. Almost there. Don't see anybody. Too dark to see anyway. Well. Why should I be afraid? Got a right to go into my own house. I'd like to see him stop me. I don't care if he did chin himself 25 times. Just let him try, that's all. You find out. I'm not going down without a fight. If I can only make the house. Put the doors unlocked. There's the porch. Oh! Darn roller skates. Door is stuck. Oh. Uh, made it. Hi, Unc. <laughs> Leroy. What are you shaking for, Unc? Leroy, have you seen anybody outside tonight? Sure, Bessie's boyfriend. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, he's not here anymore, Unc. He said he couldn't wait. Oh, he couldn't? He gave me a message for you. Said he wanted to thank you for what you did. Huh? He said he was wrong. He took another look at the old Bessie. Yeah. He said he liked the new Bessie better. <laughs> What's he talking about? My boy, you're a little angel. I am? Yeah. <laughs> and Leroy, there's another thing I want to say to you. What's that, Unc? Get those skates off the front steps. I almost broke my neck. <laughs> Good night, Leroy. Boy, what a character. <laughs> Did you take those roller skates off the front steps? Sure I did, Unc. I brought them inside. Oh, good. Leroy, I want you to listen to this. I got a letter today from the National Safety Council. It says that every year, thousands of people are injured in American homes just because of carelessness, because things are left around for people to fall over. We don't want that to happen around here, do we? No, Unc. Uh, you run up to bed, my boy. Okay. Good night, Unc. Little Leroy. Folks, let's all be a little more careful to avoid accidents around the house. Remember, there's no place like home when it's a safe home. Well, off to Betty Bye. Good night, folks. Oh! Leroy! The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by Jack Robinson and Gene Stone with music by Jack Meekin. In addition to our regular cast, you heard Arthur Q. Bryan, Ken Christie, and Gloria Holliday. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further Adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. And remember, many sections of the country will be back on standard time next Wednesday. Be sure to check your local paper for our broadcast time. Ladies, when you're in a hurry and the family's hungry, here's a quick, easy way to satisfy appetites. Serve Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food. Children love Pabstet's mellow cheddar flavor on crackers or toasted sandwiches. And for main dish treats, you can have a smooth, golden Pabstet cheese sauce ready in a jiffy for perking up the flavor of macaroni, egg, and hot vegetable dishes. Get both delicious varieties, golden cheddar and pimento Pabstet, for a variety of menu uses. Ask for P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T, Pabstet Cheese Food. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.